I want to bring in Washington Bureau Chief Mike Becerra to talk about all this. Mike, uh, good morning to you. A lot to get to, but first, uh, there's some bank records of Hunter Biden. The House Oversight Committee just released highlighting some cash he's made from places like Russia, right. Ukraine, and Kazakhstan. Tell us about that. Well, you know, and hello to you, Marty. There are allegations that have been long been made about Hunter Biden and some of his business dealings in Ukraine and Kazakhstan, China, and Romanian business business people. But today, for the first time, really, we've heard about it before, but the committee releasing some of the documents and bank records to back that up. So today, House Republicans released a third round of those banking records. They say show the Biden family and their associates were profiting from then-Vice President Biden's name. The new records, combined with the previous ones Republicans released, account for more than $20 million that they say funneled into the bank accounts of members of the Biden family and their associates. Uh, so at the center of this latest release are documents, we just talked about this, that purport to show a $3.5 million transfer from a Russian oligarch to the company run by Hunter Biden, that oligarch being the former first lady of Moscow. Uh, her name is Yelena Buterina. Uh, and uh, that money going to Hunter Biden and his now disgraced partner, Devin Archer. Uh, that's some, it's been the subject of debate for years. Even uh, then, President Trump accused Biden of getting the money himself personally when they had a debate on the debate stage in 2020 during that campaign. There's still no proof of that. And as for Devin Archer, that former business partner of, partner of Hunter Biden, he testified to the House Oversight Committee last week, alleging that Hunter Biden put his father on speakerphone during meetings with Ukrainian and other business people an estimated 20 times a way of leveraging what he termed the Biden brand to further standing with Hunter Biden's business partners. And today's documents also outline a meal that then Vice President Biden attended at this place, Cafe Milano. It's curious, it's become a power lunch spot in Washington's Georgetown neighborhood. Uh, that meal allegedly with a Russian oligarch as well as Kazakhstani and Ukrainian business figures. So a lot of documentation to back up previous allegations made by Republicans in the House Oversight Committee, Marnie. All right. So I guess the question is what happens now, Mike? Do we know what the committee plans to do next? Will more people be subpoenaed? Oh, I, I think without a doubt this, this investigation is going to be continuing throughout the course of uh, this year and into next year, of course, an election year. I think it's, it's almost a no-brainer. Uh, we should add the, the response from committee Democrats to today's release. They're slamming today's release, uh, staying in a, in a statement in part. Let's see if we have it here. This memo is more of the same. Another empty document dump that fails to show any evidence of wrongdoing by President Biden. Uh, Comer, he's the chairman of the Oversight Committee, the Republican, will again try to pass off old dismissed information as something groundbreaking in a desperate attempt to keep his investigation alive. So basically, this doesn't really move the, move the ball down the field a great deal, although it does provide more ammunition to the president's opponents, tying him, trying to tie uh, President Biden uh, to Hunter Biden, his son, and some of those business dealings that he had with Ukrainians and other international business people. Uh, on the other tax issue I mentioned a moment ago, Mike, um, this one dealing with third-party presidential candidate, Dr. Cornell West, uh, he said he does owe more than $500,000 in taxes. He's not disputing that. Is this a distraction? How much will this matter? Well, I mean, we saw Jill Stein uh, walk away from the campaign. And one of the things that's interesting about that, Marnie, is Jill Stein was the Green Party candidate back in 2020. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, back in 2016. Uh, many people believe, many scholars believe, having looked at the numbers, that she, in fact, uh, cost Hillary Clinton some of the Midwestern states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, uh, and therefore the election in 2016. Uh, a lot of that concern was transferred now, eight years later, to Cornell West and his candidacy. You know, whether it matters or not, whether it matters that Cornell West is on the record several times over the course of his long and in some quarters lauded career as saying we should tax the wealthy, uh, that the tax system is skewed in favor of the wealthy, coddles the wealthy, uh, and that, in fact, uh, uh, the, the lower classes, working classes, I should say, are, are getting the short end of the stick. And here he is found to, it actually exceeds half a million dollars in back taxes. Whether this matters or not, whether this turmoil now within the Cornell West campaign is going to matter to the campaign, I mean, he's polling, uh, I guess, around 1% in most national polls. Uh, will that be enough to m make a difference? I think we have such a long way to go. It's really hard to say at this point, Marnie. Yeah. 
All right, News Nation's Washington Bureau Chief Mike Vaccara, as always, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.